Okay guys, just a quick update. Got the full wall created. Check this out. All right, so walls created and the speakers are in place. The speakers are recessed right now about four inches back. That's the depth of the two by four framing that we made for the room, plus a half inch of drywall. And I know it seems like a lot of work to do that just for four inches. However, that allows me to keep the wall and the screen, which will be hung on that wall, as far back from the seating as possible, which allows you a larger screen, you know, to account for uh, the fact that it's going to be 16 by 9 and the increase in vertical height. Um, I was testing this out with a projector. 2.35 content, you know, wall to wall is fine at this distance, but when you increase the, you know, the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 and you're watching like Game of Thrones and you have like subtitles, your eyes are actually wandering all over the screen. There's almost too much vertical height. I've read on the forums and online that some people actually get motion sickness, you know, if they're sitting too close to a screen that's that large and their eyes are just darting all over the place. So there's definitely a sweet spot. Um, when I found the sweet spot for this room, using 16x9, with the projector back here, I had it on top of the middle subwoofer, uh, roughly in the same location it'll be permanently mounted to shortly. Uh, I went and measured the actual image on the screen, on the painter's drop cloth that I uh, purchased a week or two ago. And it yielded uh, roughly 117 inches wide by 66 inches tall. And comparatively, this screen the 110 inch silver ticket high contrast screen I was using was 96 inches wide by 55 inches tall. So that's pretty substantial. Um, I don't know the exact percentage increase, but it's, it's, it's very large. It definitely felt very immersive. Um, and I think the, that size works at this distance, which is roughly 13 feet to your eyeballs to where the screen will be. It just works. Uh, you know, Disney movie 16 by nine. It's, it's so immersive. It feels like you're in the movie without being fatiguing or giving you that motion sickness feeling. Um, yep, framing's done. We got this done this week, a little bit every day after work. I use two by threes and not two by fours just to save that extra little bit of space. Uh, it's very sturdy. It's mounted into the bottom sill plate. The original wall was created off of. It's mounted uh, with molly bolts into the wall, into the ceiling because there were no studs to actually mount the uh, or to attach this wall to. But very, very sturdy. You know, it's, it doesn't move. Um, speakers are all towed in on the left and right. When we first put the speakers back there, actually, we didn't account for towing. And they were all just flush back into the wall. And I sat down and listened to, you know, just some random audio. And it sounded not good. And we had to make some adjustments. Um, you can see that bottom sill plate we had to actually carve into. Um, to allow for the extra depth to tow in the left and right speakers. But they're all hooked up. My only concern is that the center speaker, uh, my Denon 4300, it does not have the power output that the phase linear does. However, these speakers are extremely efficient, so hopefully it doesn't need as much, but we'll see. If, if, if the receiver can't keep up, I'll buy an amplifier for it. It's fine. The, the phase linear is just a two-channel amp. So if I need another amplifier, I'll buy one. Um, so tomorrow, the plan is to... I have the spandex. I received that today from Spandex World. I bought um, three and a half yards of the Milliskin Matte Black and Milliskin Matte White. Uh, so that's sufficient for the width and the height. It's only 58 inches tall, and my screen's going to be 66, at least the fabric but I was assured on the forums that it has enough stretch that you can easily make that, uh, make up that gap, that deficiency. They do sell 120 inch wide material, but it's more expensive and it's just not necessary for a screen of this size. Um, but there's that weight package. That's the, that's the spandex. It's actually quite heavy, uh, heavier than you think. Probably a couple pounds. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, so tomorrow, the plan is to actually get the drywall going. Drywall is going to go roughly a foot, uh, or at least the, the width between the wall and the speakers on the left, and then, you know, roughly a foot or so, top and bottom, it doesn't matter, because the actual drivers and the tweeters and the speakers are pretty high, about three feet or so off the ground. 
Um, so it's to give the illusion that the wall is complete, but then we actually hang the screen, you know, on that wall over the speakers, and it, it will look like it'll look like before. It'll look like there's a full wall that's fully finished with a screen hanging on it. Um, probably gonna go with um, like cedar or something. I'm not sure the exact wood type, but like the one by three boards they sell at Home Depot and Lowe's uh, to actually create the frame and then stretch the spandex material onto that frame. Um, so, and then the last thing besides making the screen and finishing the drywall is I removed the uh, projector arm mount. Got some mud there, filling the holes. We have to move this outlet and the HDMI. I have to rip open the drywall again and run this back. Come on, zoom, focus, okay. Run it back here, so the connections will probably be like back here, and then the actual projector will go here. Um, I don't really want to rip open the whole ceiling to run the wires, you know, uh, we'll see. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to pan out, but no big deal. It's, it's just more drywall, more mudding, sanding, painting. So that's the last thing, is just moving the projector. Um, but we got to get this wall finished. Um, the only annoying thing will be actually to fix the crown molding. We're gonna have to, when this drywall is here, we're gonna have to cope, you know, get another piece and cope it in so it agrees with this. Um, do some research on that. But uh, yeah, this is almost done. We'll get the screen created. Maybe this weekend, I'm not sure. Um, because this, this drywall portion shouldn't take very long tomorrow. Then we'll do the screen. We'll just have to go buy the lumber. I've got the material. And then move the projector. A lot of work. Um, <laughs> I've got, I know I had some comments from people. You know, that's crazy. You just put a center channel under your, under your screen. You should be good. Nah, that's lazy. And I want, I love this. The fact that all the speakers are lined up. All the tweeters, same height, the drivers. You know, the, the audio will actually come from where it's supposed to behind the screen. Not to mention, I was uh, talking to some people uh, on the forum. I believe his username is Mississippi Man on AVS forum. He, I believe it's a he, uh, gives out lots of very useful advice specifically to uh, this acoustic screen building, you know, DIY. And he mentioned, or I asked him, what is the gain? of the screen when I create it using the Milliskin Matte Spandex, you know, black uh, underlayment and then the white on top. And he said it's between 0.6 and 0.7. That's incredible. Um, you know, even the best projectors, I see people buying the Epson 5040, 60 some of the uh, less expensive but still pretty expensive JVC projectors and people still aren't happy with their black levels. And that's a thing. Uh, you know, so if, even though I know using a lower gain doesn't really give you better black levels per se, it's perceived better black levels. You know, when everything's darker, your worse blacks, the grays, become darker. That's all it is. So people that run screens that have higher gain than 1.0, you know, I played that game. I had the 1.1, the 1.0, and the 0.95 sitting right on my floor. Uh, which is for sale, by the way. Uh, and this, this by far, even with its problems with hot spotting and sparkling, you know, it's got issues. These these uh, ambient light rejecting screens, they have issues. But it was still worth it. Hands down, best black levels I've had from all the screens that I've used. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to this 0.7 acoustic transparent screen and seeing how that, seeing how it looks. I'll know soon. Anyway, uh, if you're interested, uh, it's a 110 inch silver ticket, high contrast screen, it's 430 bucks on Amazon, I've got a posting on AVS form, I'd take uh, 300, I think that's fair, save 130 bucks, plus I'll throw in free shipping if you're in the US, because uh, I have no use for this screen anymore. But, um, and yes, there's plastic sheeting on the speakers to keep them dust free, at least as much as possible. Anyway guys, I'll post an update when we get the next phase complete, uh, until next time, take care.